Welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. Today we're going to be starting the double build of the Tamiya Beetle 1966 and the Ravel Beetle Cabriolet 1970. Before we start, please do comment, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and hit the bell button to stay notified for future builds. Also, we've recently hit 400 subscribers, so big thank you to all of those of you who have subscribed. Today I'm going to be building the engine, chassis and suspension for both the Tamiya Beetle and the Ravel Beetle. It'll be interesting to see how they differ and how they are similar. Firstly, I started to put together the Tamiya engine in one go before painting it. The block and the uh, cylinders um, of the flat four were in separate parts. Once I had glued all these parts together, I then primed them and went over in some aluminium spray paint and then added other details that needed to be semi-gloss black or iron afterwards. There were then other smaller details like pipes However, I noticed that quite a few of the engine details aren't put on until the bodywork has begun to be mounted around it. It's now taking on the familiar shape of the VW air-cooled engine. The four poly caps go inside the drum brakes on the VW Beetle from Tamiya. Of course, there are no poly caps on the Rebel version. The suspension here is uh, goes together in several different parts, which is quite different to the Rebel, as you'll notice later. I chose to paint these parts of the exhaust silver while still on the sprue, and then went over with semi-gloss black and gunmetal afterwards. They then fit quite nicely into place. Here is the chassis and the engine fits really snugly into place. It was then time to put the suspension onto the sides of the engine where the drivetrain is. The Tamiya Beetle has working front steering, so both of these uh, axles go into these little pins. The instructions are quite simple and easy to follow. The tie rods from the steering are positioned in such a way for left hand drive. However, simply flipping them over makes it suitable for my right-hand drive conversion. I used some Revell light grey matte for the carpets. Here's a tip, don't try to install the gear stick with your hands, as you might snap it like I did here. I used some super glue to put it back together. It wasn't perfect, but yeah, I'll be more careful with the next one. As the Tamiya kit is only set up for left hand drive, there are some features which need to be changed, such as the pedals here. There is a slot on the left hand side of the car for the pedals to fit into. However, I decided to just cut off the tab and put them onto the right. Things like the gear stick and the handbrake don't need to be moved. This part of the Tamiya is now finished, so on we go to the Ravel. Now this starts with the engine, 
However, as you can see here, part of the block and the uh, cylinder casings are already put together in one piece. And then you move on to the familiar um, semicircular shape of the air-cooled engine. I decided to add a little bit more detail to some of this following some of the painting instructions from the Tamiya kit. However, the Revell engine does seem to be a lot more detailed with several more parts, different colours and even some decals which of course if you will have watched the unboxing you'll know that the Tamiya kit has none at all. We of course also have to remember that this Revell kit was released in 2013 whereas the Tamiya I think was 1994 so quite a long time between the two. Some of these parts need to be trimmed ever so slightly to fit in, however the instructions do inform you of this. I found the tabs on these two pipes needed to be trimmed ever so slightly to fit in better. We then start using the extensive decal sheet, starting with some small little logos to go onto some of the parts of the engine. Another small decal goes on the side of the timing belt where you can see it most clearly. As you can see here the chassis to the Revell version is quite a bit different with parts of the uh, wheel arches already in place. I used a bit of super glue to fit the engine into place and it went in very nicely. This part of the rear suspension and the drum brakes which goes around the engine is already moulded into one part on the Revell kit which means it is much much easier to install. This also means that you are less likely to have the wheels out of alignment. Four 1mm holes need to be drilled onto both sides to fit these uh, running boards. I'm not actually sure what they are. Then went on to doing the front suspension. The instructions want you to heat part of the plastic to secure the uh, steering piece in place. However, with all the flammable paints and glues around, I'm never that comfortable doing this sort of thing. I found that if you were careful, it would stay in place perfectly fine once you put everything else on top of it. There are small shock absorbers that need to go into place here. And there we have it. As you can see from these two pictures, the engines are similar, but the models are pretty different. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.